Now, in addition to this uh, very special clock that I told you about, uh, I have a number of other items uh, in the other room that illustrate uh, the adventures that my dad lived through during the Second World War. So please join me. As many families do, uh, we uh, kept a number of mementos uh, from the various generations uh, here in our corner cabinet, the things that are most dear to us, which I'll share with you. Going back several generations, uh, first with uh, some of the things from my wife's family, uh, the watch of her grandfather. My grandfather's watch and his military decorations from when he served in Dutch Indonesia during the First World War, his pocket knife. These are gold coins. Uh, he had gold coins sewn in his belt as he was escaping occupied Holland on his way to in England. And this is a very special pair of shoes to me. It is my first pair of shoes from when I was about two years old. And this is a scale model of the G1 fighter plane that he flew uh, as the Germans invaded to defend Holland uh, that my book is about. So let me share that with you here. Yeah, so uh, on May the 10th, 1940, uh, a bright blue sunny day, uh, the Germans uh, invaded Holland, bombed the whole country to smithereens. The entire city of Rotterdam was flat. Of course, the first thing they attacked uh, was all the military uh, bases, all the Air Force bases, all the planes were, were shot to pieces on the ground. There were only a handful of planes left. And so uh, on the 13th of May, just three days later, when my dad was called to duty uh, to fly a mission into a sky that was filled with Messerschmitts, uh, his chances of survival were, were virtually nil. Um, when he um, had to leave to his quote-unquote work, obviously as a fighter pilot, uh, that morning, um, as he said farewell to my mother, uh, there was a very tearful uh, goodbye because uh, my mother at that point was seven months pregnant from uh, my older brother. And my dad said, the worst thing is that I will never know if it's a boy or a girl. And with that, he went to work and fly this mission. This is the book with the picture uh, of the attack uh, on our own bridges over the, uh, the rivers to hold back the German invasion. You see a Messerschmitt actually sh shooting down uh, our T-5 bomber. And my dad uh, in, in one of these fighter planes, this is the other one that also got shot down. My f dad saw his friends getting killed in front of him. You see, the, the whole sky is filled with Messerschmitts. I mean, they had no hope of survival. Uh, and indeed, uh, my, my dad was, was shot at as well. Uh, his plane was the only one that made it back to base. Uh, but uh, he came home bleeding with uh, bullet holes in his leather jacket. Um, and here you actually see the very medal. That is the Vliegerskruis. And you see it is in the place of honor, in, in order. Uh, this uh, was the medal that he uh, treasured the most. And you get that, uh, that medal for initiative, uh, courage and perseverance. That is what it says here for initiativ, moot and volharding. Uh, and it lists all the, the Dutch aviators who won the Vliegerskruis uh, for their courage in the direct face of the enemy. Um, this picture here is a Spitfire, uh, which he loved very dearly, uh, and he found it to be flying almost as fantastic as the B-40 that he trained on in Jackson, Mississippi, and that he flew in uh, Australia against the Japanese. It's quite uh, a step from uh, a double-decker World War I plane to a Spitfire, it is, it's quite amazing. Um, this is a letter that my mother wrote in 1944 to my father in Australia. Of course, all correspondence was policed by the Nazis. So the only way you could get a letter the, uh, to, from my mom to my dad was through the Red Cross, as you can see. 
uh, and it was censored and read by the Germans uh, and passed. And uh, what she said actually uh, was, Dear, I uh, will spoil you tremendously when you get back. Uh, Stephen, our, our oldest son, uh, uh, would love to see his dad uh, and we are all very proud of you. Um, here's the clock that I told you about already uh, that uh, helped him survive in the tropical jungle after he crashed, uh, made an emergency landing in Papua New Guinea. This is also interesting from his uh, time in the United States. After he completed his training in Jackson, Mississippi, on his way to Australia, he went through the whole United States on his way to the West Coast. And this, this is a collection of uh, matchbox uh, wrappers uh, from all the hotels and uh, places that he stayed. The top one is from El Tovar in the uh, Grand Canyon and so on, New York, and quite amazing. The item that I cherish the most, and that is this item. This is a f the front of a flower bag. Uh, and um, you might think, why is a flower bag so important? Well, this is an American flower bag milled in Chicago, Illinois, USA in January of 1945. And let me explain why this is so dear to me. Because in January 1945 was uh, the worst time of the war in Holland. It was the hunger winter. Um, Hitler had uh, decided to shut down the entire food supply to the country. There was no food, no coal to warm the houses, nothing. People died of starvation in Holland. 20,000 people died of starvation. People survived eating tulip bulbs. I mean, you eat onions, you can eat tulip bulbs, but there's not much nourishment in them. In fact, um, my mother was so undernourished that uh, she got an infection in her central spinal cord. She couldn't walk anymore. She was paralyzed from the waist down. Very much towards the end of the war, uh, the uh, Allied forces uh, dropped uh, food packages in Holland. Uh, amongst others, this bag of flour. So to get a first-hand report of what it was like uh, when these food packages and this bag of flour came down, uh, I asked my brother, I mean, neither my mother nor my grandmother live anymore, but my uh, brother wrote uh, his first-hand observations. I mean, he was four and a half years old, but he remembers it uh, very clearly. He says, I remember the morning clearly that my grandmother, listening to the radio, heard that in the next half hour, the bags full of flour were going to be dropped right across the canal where we lived. Excitedly, she picked me up and together we ran to the edge of the canal. I can still see them coming, the Allied bombers indeed flying very low and very slow, and then all of a sudden they started dropping the bags into the fields across. Wave after wave came down. When I looked at my grandmother, I saw that her eyes were wet from crying, silently. She hugged me and said, now we will survive and the war will soon be over. See, these are emotional things. The bags were collected by the Dutch authorities and the flour was correctly and honestly distributed among the hungry population. I remember till this day how the bread baked at home from this flour tasted. Oh, wonderful. A week later, the empty bags were made available to the people. Many made clothes out of them. My grandmother kept one bag intact to remember this unique moment in her and our lives. I will cherish it for as long as I live. That's my brother Stephen.